Hello, everybody. Welcome to the next episode of our wonderful TGR podcast. We have a special themed episode for you tonight, all about horror games. The scary, the shit, and the shit scary. It is also the official anniversary of Silent Hill franchise. So happy 15th anniversary to a great game, which didn't turn out all that well, looking at current standards. But we'll discuss that later. Before we jump into it, I would first like to let the new listeners know we are The Gaming Rig, a freelance team of journalists, web editors and review critics here today to bring you honest opinions, sometimes controversial, all about the gaming world. You can come check us out at thegamingrig.co.uk or on our social media sites, facebook.com forward slash TGR UK and twitter.com forward slash TGR underscore UK. Pay special attention this week to our Facebook and Twitter as we're currently running an awesome Skyrim Legendary Edition competition with further details can be found over there. Right, without further delay, my name's Alan, the host, and we have with you with us today Ryan, Jay, Vinny, Pete, William, all members of the team. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello, Hello there. How are we all doing? Yeah, good. All right, I suppose. Good. See, we're too polite to all answer at once. Well, after you, I insist. I'm okay. How are you? <laughs> I am oh, above God. average. It's good to know we're all spiffy. Right, cool. We'll jump straight into it then, because we've got a few bits to cover. Um, we'll start from the front of the table, so that will be Jay. Yellow. Your favourite aspects of horror games. <clears throat> Mm, favorite aspect, mm-hmm. I'd say originality. In all the in all the horror games that are really good, there's always something original about it that makes it stand out more so, I think, than a lot of other genres. Okay, do you have examples? Um, Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem, the sanity meter in that. Um, you can explain that in a bit more detail for others that don't know. Yeah, um, it was a game released on the GameCube. I'm not sure. Was it a release game? No. Like a release game? <clears throat> I don't think so, but I think it was quite early on. It was pretty early. Um, I actually played it not too long ago, and though it, it still does look dated, it's still incredible to play. The main premise of the game was that as you'd go through, you'd face off against these monsters, um, and on site they would lower this meter that you had called a sanity meter, and as you go through the game and become less and less sane as such, you got a load of freaky effects like um one of the most famous ones was that the game would pretend to crash it would say that disc cover for the gamecube was open um and uh, practically everyone i know who's played it has fell victim to this for the inevitable oh my god i can't believe that why is this game screwing up and the moment you would obviously go to actually sort out the disc cover the game would flash back and your protagonist would be sobbing and crying because she was she was just crazy as a brush that's awesome that is so <laughs> that was it amazing. Is. Have you have you not heard of them? No, I've I've never. I didn't own a GameCube. I, I, when they came out, I didn't have a games console because my parents yeah. wouldn't buy one. Was this, was well, this... Nintendo were actually so proud of that idea that they've actually copyrighted it. Mm. Oh really? Uh, I really? Yeah, believe it or not, no other game can do five. that. Only Nintendo were allowed to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was a PC gamer for a long, 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 long time because I just didn't have enough money for a games console. So yeah. I, I never. Never got to experience that. <laughs> that yeah, would be I mean, awesome. Yeah, look up on kind of um, on the internet or something. Kind of this, the uh, the various effects. There was this one as well that really got me the first time. Um, you would go into a room, um, and the kind of you'd have like a hub character who didn't really face off against enemies very much. He's very much kind of puzzly. You'd go into a room, and there'd be all these weak enemies around. Oh and, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's no worry. I'm just gonna slash them up a little bit, and you would hit them, and nothing would happen. And they start attacking you and be going more and more insane, and you just slash oh. your gun going. Oh, I, I thought God. you, I thought you were talking about the one where it filled you in a ro- it put you in a room full of enemies, and then said the controller is disconnected, and all the while these enemies are just like lurching <laughs> towards you slowly. Was, and because the enemies were invincible, and in both of those scenarios, you would die, yeah. and then your character would be alive again outside the room, kind of sobbing and crying, and you're just like. Did the game just assault me with the invincible enemies only to <laughs> I've got to say, I mean, Eternal Darkness, as far as I'm concerned, was one of the most imaginative like horror games I've ever encountered. But unfortunately, I didn't... I really didn't think it was very good. I, which is a massive shame, because I've got a load of respect for it. 
but I remember actually playing it, and again, the the gameplay was very rickety. Is the best way I, to I'd say. It. Otherwise, I think it was great. I mean, I, I mean, enough. another another, um, another example, Dead Space. One of the most things, uh, one of the things that was really toted about it was obviously it dealt with a different way to deal with enemies. You know, don't shoot them in the head. Yeah. Um, Eternal Darkness had that as well. You could target the enemy's limbs, particularly to disable them or kind of cut their head off if you wanted them to be wandering about without sight to hit you. And it was one of the first games that I can certainly remember that had. You know, you didn't just shoot them as a target in front of you. You kind of strategically sorted out where you're going to hit things. Yeah, no, I can see what you mean about the um, similarities to, like, uh, Dead Space. And I guess with the Insanity Meter, it's similar to the Amnesia games. Is that correct? Because that one is if you... Well, spend similar to one of the out. Amnesia games. Sorry? <laughs> similar yeah. to one of the Amnesia games. Yeah, right. the first one had the meter. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, well, does machine to pigs not have it? No. no. They took it out, didn't they? You can literally run through the entire thing, but That's... I cried like a little girl the first time. <laughs> it's, it's it's scarier though. I think um I I'm think wondering if maybe pigs... the fans complained about that being in then and that's why it was removed. No, oh, most people see. complained that most people complained that it had been taken out. Just seems like a really weird decision to make to have concept which obviously makes it quite original to then just take it out yeah because i thought the sand some reason works quite well it's because well, it's uh, important to remember the, the machine for pigs sorry it's different developers so it was uh, that's exactly what i was going to say yeah uh, i mean the chinese room made machine for pigs and they didn't want it like to be as, a game as such they wanted more to tell a story which i think they did very well and i like either game equally if i'm honest but um that is very true yeah completely different developers yeah. Fair dues, fair dues. Is there any more in your list there, Jay? Um, kind of like, well, maybe focusing on, instead of looking at a title, maybe look at like an aspect or something, you know, in terms of, obviously, say, originality. What what, what else is there for you? Because there must be a couple of that factors for you to keep going back to them, because I imagine you yeah. enjoy I think them. I think the main thing about horror games is it keeps people, people coming back. Um, not necessarily within the same series, but everyone... When you are, if you were to ask someone what was their favourite moment, most of them would identify the first time something happened, like the first time something really made them jump. So, I mean, for example, I'd say the scariest moment in like a, a in like a horror game is I don't know if it's Resident Evil one or two, but the first time you come across the dogs. Oh bloody! One. That's number one. one. That's one. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just remember going down that hallway and the music starts up a bit and you're kind of going right. There's going to be some zombie. It's going to appear at the end of the corridor. <clears throat> it's going to appear behind me. No through the fucking window, smash, everyone in the room has run out, the controller is lying. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like that, you always find it. it's the, I mean, obviously the second time, you're not too bothered about it, but the first time something happens in a yeah. horror is what everybody remembers. I was 11 when that moment. happened to I'll me. Say that. I was like eight or nine, and I turned the PlayStation off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Run out of the room crying. Mom! It was a little bit like that. I haven't shat myself for seven years at that point. And <laughs> yeah, I was about to say the last time I found myself when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, and most people kind of would have the dogs come through the room, run out screaming, and then run into their dog and kind of go, Stay away from me! <laughs> Uh, I don't look true. at windows the same now. Yeah, true. Did anyone um, play the GameCube remake where you go through that same bit oh. where the zombie dog smash through the window, but in the GameCube version, the window just cracks a little bit. Like yeah, nothing actually it's... happens. You go through thinking, oh, I'm going to go through the dog room in a minute, and then the window just goes, ding, and a little shard of glass pops out. <laughs> it's absolutely genius. It's so good. Did it then smash through another window, or did it not at all? I can't remember. It was a long time ago since I played it. I think eventually something smashes through that window. But yeah, that I loved that touch. I thought that was so clever. The only other time I, I, that's that's in, the only other time I can remember encountering the dogs in Resident Evil, um, well, that particular game, was when you went outside, you would have to kind of move between buildings really quickly because they'd appear and start chasing you down. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that doesn't compare to the, the pants browning window jumping moment. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <clears throat> But yeah, I'd say the uh, best things about horror games is the first times that you you know your heart jumps into your throat and the originality that they have to show if yeah, they're going to be good. I'd, I'd agree with that. Yeah, very good, uh, very good answer there. Are you, is that are you all right? Do you want to carry on, or are you happy with your answers for now? I don't know. No, I, 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 Ryan, Ryan's probably like itching to say something. 
<laughs> well, you have to wait because next down the line is William. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> you knew what this was. Every time I started, you're the one that usually starts them off, William. So you know. Uh, that's my reaction every time I start yeah. a game. Yes, with, with I, you start. I think William's having his own brown pants moment right now. Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus! <laughs> Does it sound like you relieved yourself? Yeah, no, <laughs> I was a bit. That was the brown pants. <laughs> My favourite is a mixture of the jump scares, but it's also something I hate as well, if that makes sense. Because it's done so well, like in Outlast, when you go through that one door and the body just falls down. Yeah. Oh, God. I haven't played yeah. Outlast yet. I'm, I'm waiting until it comes free on PS Plus and then I'm going to be playing through it. So I hope About five more days to wait, Vinny. Five more days to not have oh, anything it's spoiled. It's going to be worth the wait. I love Outlast. Yeah, but that that one bit was probably the scariest bit in the entire game, and I did it. I had to play through a second time for the review and have the <laughs> game, and I still crap my pants. <laughs> I was just sitting there like, "Oh, it's gonna be fine." Don't. <gasps> the first I just... time I encountered that, like my girlfriend came running in from the opposite room because I literally made a noise. Whenever I get a jump scare in a game, I can't just go. Ah! I go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I challenge you to find someone who has a jump scare in a game who still successfully manages to make a really masculine noise about it. <laughs> Good for I'm scared. <laughs> you could have like, you know, oh, that was scary, but not as scary as my macho. No. <laughs> Everyone who jumps in a game will do something. We'll either let out kind of this blood-curdling, girly scream or just kind of like... Rah! I do that then have a nurse to go and punch a wall or wrestle a bear or something to you know, upscale my manhood. <laughs> Yeah, the dog scared me. I'm going to go jump into a volcano while fighting ninjas. <laughs> the worst bit is when you're playing with a mouse and it's the DPI is up and you get a jump scare and your arm just flails everywhere <laughs> and your character's like... <laughs> 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 looking at I? <laughs> the early days of fear, I guess that would be, wouldn't it? Oh, it's... Oh, I never get used to survival horror games. It's just something... I'm just a big wimp. Oh. But there's, there's nothing like, there for you to keep going back then, even though you, you, it's something you hate. Is it because you're looking for the next scare? Is that it's what the, it is? It's the gameplay. The gameplay is much better than than in most games for me. Like I, I went, I played Amnesia One because I really liked the whole thing for opening doors. <laughs> that was really good. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. It was such a simple thing, but I was like, I want to open some doors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For some reason, it was strangely satisfying. It's like, I'll just click to grab and drag to open. Yeah. Wait, if I push the mouse back where it was, the door closes. There was and something then, like, like really... You're in, you're shaking to open the door then, didn't you? Then <laughs> yeah. you have to run away and then open and close the door really fast. It's like, this was easier five minutes ago. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a good answer. Any more there, William? Uh, my other one would probably be my favourite at the minute is indies because they're working with much less so they have to be more creative which means not showing the monster straight away or not at all so they're making you scared out of sheer just out of your it's, it's own mind really so they play with your mind more than say Resident Evil games would that would just show you the monster do you mean like the psychological horror games yeah like Amnesia was that until you seen the monster and it was like, oh, fuck this. <laughs> yeah. It was basically a game version of Jeepers Creepers. I'm trying to think of one of the indie games that didn't show a monster at all, but it really, it's racking my mind. Uh, I know Slender didn't show theirs for a little while, then he just started showing up everywhere. So That, for me, has got to be the most recent terms of horror gaming that really did do me in and that was just from the tech demo of the woods what really really frightened me was how long um, a machine for pigs held off on the pigs yeah and then suddenly threw one at you that was faster than you it's like i hate this pig <laughs> <laughs> i was just like i'm never eating bacon again <laughs> <laughs> I've never been a fan of the pigs until bloody since saw because that in that that was pretty freaky then I never watched like, Sog because it was too gory. Uh, freaking, yeah, I, I don't uh, consider that sort of thing very scary. I just... Hostile. Kind of it, and it was hostile. creepy. I wouldn't call it scary. 
Plus, I, I get, the best I get, a little bit. For me, I get more scared in a game than I do a movie. Because I yeah, think definitely. the game will become a lot more immersed. That's an interesting... I was talking with um, Alex the other day, the guy who does the film reviews. Yeah. And we were saying, like, video game... The uh, horror games have just become much more terrifying than horror movies. Like, the last... I watched um, The Conjuring a while, and about three weeks ago or something, and, like, everyone was saying, oh, it's the, the scariest film of, like, last year. It's, it's terrifying. And I was... I got a good few scares from it, but I wasn't like, oh, man, that's going to give me nightmares. Any it other was... game that I played at the moment, like, uh, the other day I played... Um, was it one late night, which is just some free Ooh. horror game? I I shit my pants. I cried like a girl. Uh, I Thank was, you for was, bringing that up. Downloading. Was, oh, mate, it, it 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 screwed me up so much. It was just horrible. William will be doing a let's play of that, won't you? <laughs> yeah, with his hands tied behind his back and a gun pointed to the back of his head. Casting <laughs> <laughs> all been sorted, and then somebody can do a review. Yep, it's it's very um, it, it's it's not even like overly clever. I haven't I haven't finished it yet because there was just one jump scare which screwed me up so much. I switched off the game in <laughs> yeah. the laptop. I was just like, no, 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 no. Went and just played Weird. Battlefield instead because just I'm good at that and I've I, seen I, this. That's happy, happy thing. I've seen this. I've seen this game before. Uh, what do you call him? Oh, there's a Swedish YouTuber I watched that played through Beauty this. Pie. Pie, yeah. No, not not that one. I don't like. No. <laughs> I like PewDiePie. That's why um, I like about the game. He seems a Marmite sort of. Um, uh, he seems to have a Marmite sort of audience. PewDiePie does. Yeah. What, what, what is him? Um, he. Uh, I kind of respect PewDiePie for the amount of horror games he gets through because so many people will just like quit and just be like, "No, nah, I'll wait until later." But he will just stick at that horror game until the bitter end. And that's what I do like about PewDiePie. That's all I like about PewDiePie. <laughs> it was Rubaz I was thinking of. Rubaz is awesome. Ah. Ah, fair enough. He, he, uh, he's one of the guys that find that GTA mod where it floods the city. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Big tsunami. Do you guys watch that recently on the Facebook page? No, no. not yet. No. Jump on the TGR plug for you. Jump on the TGR Facebook group. Scroll down a bit, and there's a there's a mod on there basically that shows the whole of G as uh, was it Lan Santos? Is that what you say? How do you say GTA's world? Oh, um, the GTA's world anyway. Um, and he's flood the whole thing like Water World. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Okay. yeah. it looks very good. It's, it's, it looks it looks like fun. Um, okay, well that's that's. Going off track a bit, but yeah. So, is there any more, William, or, or are you happy with the two you discussed? I can't really think of much more. <laughs> no good, valid answers. All right, then. I know he's itching to answer. Ryan, your favourite aspects to horror games? Um, well, so many. I mean, I, I I love horror games anyway. I can't, you know, if one comes out, I'm all over it. But um, my my favourites are like. There's a lot of reliance, I think, in like horror films and horror games for jump scares. And I, I really appreciate games that make you feel uneasy without there actually being any jump scares. Um, they, they, they terrify you or they make you feel discomfort, if you like, because of the atmosphere that they've built around it. Like one I'm playing at the moment and um, is fast becoming like one of my favorite favorite horror games at the moment is the project zero two remake on the wii which absolutely nobody knows exists or have bought apparently because it was really fucking hard to find but um you i don't know if you've ever played project zero or know about it but it's a japanese horror game where you camera just one? that's the camera one yeah oh yeah i played it yeah you um you go around just taking photos of ghosts with this camera with exorcism exorcisional properties which sounds oh, ridiculous screw that but <laughs> yeah, no, it's so good. It's uh, you kind of you get points for getting closer to the ghosts or waiting longer to take photos of the ghosts. So in any other game with a point and shoot sort of mechanic, you'd be firing frantically and going ah, die, 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 die. But on um, Project Zero, you have to linger on the enemy. You just have to stare that enemy out until like until you focus, if you like, you know, until your camera gains focus, and then you have to like take photos to exercise them. And like at no point in the game do you like do you, is there a jump scare? 
every five minutes it makes you think there's going to be one and there never is there is never a jump scare <laughs> they've got this mechanic where you have to hold down the a button to like peek behind a curtain or lift up a cover or you know um open up a window or something and it's all done agonizingly slowly because you you know to make you think that there's going to be a jump scare never is there's never a jump scare. <laughs> but you, 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 every time you go and do it, you brace yourself for one, and it's and I, I you know I really like games that can do that. They they can make you feel a certain way, and I think like horror games are the only games that really elicit a genuine emotion out of you. You don't, I mean, you know, games like Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons, they can make you cry, and I cried about five fucking times during a Tale of Two Sons. But um, horror games, I think the part of the challenge is just seeing if you've got the brass balls to go any further. And that's really interesting. Like every other game, the challenge is very much tied to the controller or shoot this many people in the head or smack that many people about or win this many races or kick this many babies. But in a horror game, the challenge is just dare you to go down that corridor. I dare you to open that door. And that is really, that's quite an exciting idea. That's a good, a good way of wording the concept of it. The challenge to the horror game is completing it, is getting through it. Yeah, absolutely, and like, that's what I love about it. Because I'm a pussy, and that's why I love horror games. It's a, it's the perfect opportunity to enjoy the fact that I'm a caring, sniveling little wreck, and I, you know, for 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 like a couple of hours, I can revel in that, and I love that. Am I right in thinking that they were going to they they were going to or are making a new one for the Wii U? A pro- new project? They fucking better. But knowing Nintendo, Knowing Nintendo, the way, they'll put Luigi in it and make it a sequel to Luigi's Mansion. The way that gamepad is, it's perfect for that kind of game, am I right? Yeah, watch Nintendo not do it because they're <laughs> run by idiots. I love my Wii U and I love Project Zero. And Nintendo actually owned the publishing rights Project Zero now. I don't trust them not to fuck it up, quite frankly. Maybe they could do like a crossover. You know that um, Find the Ghost game on Nintendo Land? A ghost camera? No, it's, um, was it? it's like a party game, I think, and you kind of, one person plays the ghost and the other ones have to go around with a flashlight to try and find it. And you oh, get that game's song. great fun. Yeah, the weirdest thing about that is that when the ghost catches someone, they just kind of leave them there on the floor. It's like the ghost has just kind of one night standed them and left them there. <laughs> but yeah, you should totally cross that over with that kind of, you know, ghost seeking something. And then if, you know, if you don't, yeah. snap the, the, if, you know, if you don't get the most fabulous pose for this ghost in the amount of time, <laughs> it's just going to like molest you and leave. Suffice to say, if Nintendo really did make a Wii U Project Zero using the gamepad as the camera, I would come. <laughs> Just right there and then. The moment I heard about it, like, oh, oh, two towels. That, that would wow, be that's a lot. That's a lot for uh, a game. Okay. Yeah, that, like, that's, that's like the scary horror. movie that's moment. Horror, it's not just it. one towel there, everybody. Two towels. That's 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 Ryan's rating system. I think the fact it's a towel. <laughs> I don't give it five out of five. I give it two towels. At least. Ryan gives it two out of five towels. <laughs> <laughs> go on, go on, Vinny. Um, oh, crap. My, my, I don't enjoy aspects of horror games you're not meant to enjoy it like mm. um i i swear well, inverted commas you you do enjoy it you at the end of it you'll be like oh yeah that was awesome um yeah. but you know it's <laughs> horror games man just they're just one of those things that you you kind of you don't go out to play horror games every day because there's so little of them and there's so there's many, so, there's so, there's so few, few of them that are really good. I don't know the fa- the fact at the moment. Um, the thing I enjoy about horror games is just that they're so many of the good ones are free. Yeah, and uh, if you think about like my my most hated game of 2013 was Dead Space Three because they killed oh. what was a good franchise. It was when we first started this podcast, I went on a pretty big rant about that because it was ridiculous, really, because the whole point of Dead Space originality was they brought in Saw directors to bloody help with the plot. They wanted to bring back survival horror. The whole marketing campaign, the whole reason Dead Space was created is there weren't those games. Dead Space 2 was bigger, bolder, and for all intents and purposes, was better. It was great. I I really liked Dead Space 2. 
me too. And then it was just a massive cash cow for three. And they'd seen the popularity, the likes of how... Because even though, you know, Resident Evil changed its direction, it did sell, and, it, and four sold as well. They saw this kind of, like, action-heavy horror, mm. and that's what they did with yeah. Dead 3. And you were just like, you fuckers. That wasn't even the worst of Dead Space 3's problems. The you know the balance, the level design, the characters, the story, and practically everything else was the real problem with Dead Space 3. <laughs> the problem it was, is, it was like they didn't even look at any of the other two. So yeah, I agree. Like there were, the, the great thing about well, I say great, the hilarious thing about Dead Space 3 is like you go into a room, it would be perfectly square, and on every wall would be an air vent, and it would just. It would the air vents would endlessly spawn enemies, and when that you get was, out in the snow, level. was it you walk along a corridor and you'll see a load of like necromorphs that haven't been dismembered and they're just yes. lying there? They might as yes. well be going. Shh, he's coming! He's coming! We're going to jump up the <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> yeah, it's literally like uh, it, I'm like I'm all right. Come on, that got me the first time. It got me the second time, but mate, it's not going to get me the third time. Oh, you jumped you know up! The surprise! Thing is. The best thing is when you go out into the ice and you think, oh, brilliant, I'm out in the ice in the mountains now. Maybe there won't be any square rooms with air vents in them. No, but here's a square cave with vent-shaped holes in it. <laughs> Guess what? And it was, at that point, it was like, oh, go fuck yourself. This might as well be Geometry Wars because you're just running around aiming in the opposite direction that you're running and just shooting down swarm after swarm after swarm with the same... Fuck it, Geometry Wars had even more enemies. It, it, it <laughs> Dead Space 3 was just not good. Nah. At yeah. all. I was glad Problem. when it finished. I, I, I marked it as a sci-fi game. There, there was no need to put fucking Isaac or the Dead Space name on that. Don't no. Problem is, Maybe it's, it's I love something. Dead Space 1 too. I ruined it for me playing 3. They're both yeah, trying to grab has. the Call of Duty franchise. That's the problem. Sorry? Sorry? They're, they're trying to grab all the Call of Duty fans. That's their problem. Yeah. Not realizing that yeah, no, that's true. they could have been trying to do that. Like they were, did it. it not realizing the original well. fan base are sitting there waiting for the best one, and they're just going, "No, we'll get all that those millions over there who aren't going to move away from their franchise." Yeah, why would yeah. they leave Call of Duty? Well, they have now to go to Battlefield Four, but that's irrelevant. Yeah, but, but more to the point, why would you compete with Call of Duty? It's a fucking colossus. You're not going <laughs> to beat it. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it will always sell, and I think it's just—I don't know. Maybe Titanfall might buck that trend. Maybe Titanfall is going to be the Call of Duty killer that just will, you know, change everyone's minds. But in t unless it does that. Call of Duty it is about will sell time every that... single year. Yeah, it's 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 just going to be like one of the. It's going to be like a James Bond film. Every James Bond, like, was it the safest movie to make in um, uh, Hollywood is a James Bond film that is guaranteed to mm. make a gigantic profit, and that is yeah. what Call of Duty is. It is James <laughs> Bond, and you know. It, I guess that to keep it in context with this horror podcast, it does terrify me that that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake! <laughs> Oi! Very I good. would like, having said that, I would like to see a, a James Bond film reenacted by swearing thirteen-year-olds in Xbox headsets. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing to watch. YouTube, do it. Yeah, we, I guess the other aspect of horror games that, well, this is this is kind of standard in every single horror game that has, that has to be in there. You have to have vulnerability, and the best way to do that is not give you any option to fight back. Hmm. And that's my favourite. I, I recently finished Amnesia Dark Descent. I'd never played it before, and Christ, the fact that I couldn't, I couldn't even pick up, like, a, a piece of furniture and chuck it at the monsters then run off just scared well, you, the can. Shit out of me. You, you can do that it's oh, hilariously <laughs> ineffective yeah it, it's literally like um magic Arp doing splash that is what... <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is a horror game that should be invented you you know your cast is a magic Arp and all your enemies are like nidder king or something what yeah, magic Arp, you splash magic cthulhu Arp. fainted <laughs> <laughs> um but like, I don't mind horror games that do have, like, you know, guns in them. You can fight back, but you're going to have to limit the ammunition. That's where Resident Evil 5 and 6 failed. Like, Resident Evil 5 is still a good game. It's, you know, a solid action game, but it's not scary at all. 
because I'm kind of you're sorry, littered on. with ammunition all the time. You was it? Um, I'm playing a game recently. It's called uh, Sir, You Are Being Hunted, and oh. it's uh, it's a survival game, and it has got a tagline of a horror on it. And I guess that you know that that's kind of relevant to it, but. Just, you know, the fact that you have to save your ammunition so much and, like, if you have all these robots coming after you and shooting at you, you can't fight back because you need to save that ammunition for yeah, yeah. a much more vital point. And that, that, that's, I guess, it's not so much horror, but it's tension. And that's what you need in a horror game. You need a lot of tension. That does yeah, help. That does complement it. Say about weapons in horror games, though. I think sometimes it can work. I mean, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. Some, it I think it sounded okay, but it was split vote, I think. But Alan Wake, I thought that done. Oh. I thought it done. I wouldn't say it was horror, but it was a suspense. But I thought it done the weapon mm. to um, ghost supernatural, you know, shooting enemies well, where yeah. you had to flash the torch in order to get rid of the darkness, which was its yeah. up, to then be able to kill it. It was yeah, for I me. consider myself a pretty big Alan Wake apologist. That game, it didn't get like bad reviews, but people were disappointed with it. And I, I love Alan Wake. They, yeah. That game did so many things well. Yeah, it I really, really did. I really did enjoy it. I, I love Alan Wake. It scared me. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Everything scares me. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I get him to do, always do the Let's Plays. It's brilliant. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's, that's it's really good, Vinny. I'm just conscious of... um keeping everybody in the loop. So, Pete, right. moving on, what are your favourite aspects of horror? Well, I had a great list in front of me at this time, you know, things that I could say, and and then it's all been covered already. So, <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I think the biggest thing for me is it, that helplessness you can actually get sometimes when actually playing. Yeah, that, it was briefly mentioned um, earlier, so without having the guns, without having weapons, it, and it, it helps get you more into the game at least it, from my perspective as well it's like again briefly mentioned it is like slender and amnesia um it's not really much you can do just play and get shit scared <laughs> <laughs> all that can really happen um and especially when you get a bit more immersive like the little thing just opening the door with your mouse it and then suddenly a fucking monster appears out of nowhere and makes you turn off the pc and cry like a little girl but yeah um just great you know yeah, definitely. No, I think I think what it is like like they all said as well. It's it's the aspect of opening the door and things like that. But it's later on. It's something so simple you're not able to do because it, it, you're so freaking scared. Exactly, it gives you more panic. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And is there, is there any more that you you know you really enjoy when playing? Well, I think I'll cover the main things really. It's it's that uh, I don't know. It, it's just the immersive. Yeah, once yeah. you once you're really immersed into that, it, it gives you that jump scare and it. I know it's almost the drug in a weird way, you know. Yeah, definitely. With me, then um, I, 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 one that wasn't covered though is music. Yeah. Do you guys agree on that? Yeah. What's, what's well, a good like example? Lack of as well. It's in, like the uh, music in Silent Hill. It's 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 music, but it's all really creepy and it's sound effects. And I don't yeah. I, without the music, without that sort of um feel to, especially a game like Silent Hill, it wouldn't be the same. And that, that game like, alone worked on on its its soundtrack. In my opinion. Oh yeah, because as soon as that music changes, that's it. Yeah, you know, you're in for shit. And I, I mean, you know, and sound effects as well. Obviously, with the alarm with Silent Hill, as soon as that alarm kicked in, you oh. knew where you were going at that point. Mm. I think, uh, you know, and I think a lot of the indie guys, bless them. Obviously, they they got they've they've only got a small amount to deal with. They exclude that a lot of time because obviously it is scary. I suppose if you hear the sound effects of footsteps behind you and things like that. But I think music do, is a factor as well. Do you guys agree? Yeah, yeah or like, the, um, even like the lack of music. So when, when everything's just dead silent and like there's nothing but like you, the sound of your own character's footsteps, that's massively unnerving. Yeah. Like going back to that uh, game, Sir, You Are Being Hunted, I definitely recommend you all give it a look because it is pretty awesome. Um, like it is dead silent. There's no music at all, and just like you only hear the sound of you know the grass crunching beneath your feet. And when the sound design is brilliant, so like music and sound is so important. So when one of the robots shoots at you, and you and you don't know it's gonna it's gonna do that, like you don't know if one of the robots has seen you, it scares the living shit out of you because the gunshots are so. There's just the, the sound of the gunshots is done so well. It's this sharp crack, and it, it makes you leap out your seat, which is 
So yeah, sound and music is massively important in horror games. Do you all agree on that one as well? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Cool. Well, that's, that's some really good um, examples and some, you know, um, what we discussed and stuff as well. So that was pretty good. Moving on to the next question then, really. Your opinions on the current state of horror. Do you think it needs to improve? Does, is it okay to stay the same? Or should we go back to the pre previous incarnations, i.e. Silent Hill original, Resident Evil original? I have a massive uh, beef with developers saying that our oh, horror is a dead franchise now no it's just because they're trying to make it into an action game as such you know refer to dead space 3 and it isn't a good game then they they use the excuse our oh, horror is just isn't a genre worth doing anymore it's a dead genre that's absolute bullcrap because now all of these indie developers are coming along and making these brilliant games so yeah there's nothing really wrong with the horror genre it's just it's there's something wrong with the the big developers when they're doing it when they're I making these games i just think it's been something that's been neglected um over yeah the years. you want to explain that a bit more um i don't know i mean when i was younger i used to love the horror games like you know the resident evil son hills and then just nothing really then uh, draw you know drew more attention to it anymore and then it's only well last year when the, the, the indie, funny enough the indie developers started coming out creating them, you know, the three horrors, and they just seem to work so well, but, you know. It just... I mean, they've had goes at attempts at horror. We, we had your fear. How long ago was that? That was pretty scary at times. Yeah. What, what year was that? 2000 and... Exactly. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> 2006, I think. Right, but... Minus what we grew up with with Resident Evil and Silent Hills, there was just yeah, there was a big gap of nothing, weren't there? Really? Um, I suppose they killed the market for such a well, long time. They just kept releasing. I didn't suppose, they? yeah. It was the uh, Call of Duties of. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was actually. Yeah. What, what's your agreement on that then? Do you think it should improve, stay the same, Mini? Um, I don't think it needs improving. It just you know the develop big developers. Um, just need to learn that, you know, it, it, it's them. It's, it's not the genre, it's them. They're just not doing it well. The execution is just really poor from some of them. And I'm really, really looking forward to playing Outlast because that's that's been, like, a massive horror game um, from, like, you know, big developers and stuff. And it's been in, you know, it, everyone's been going, oh, it's the scariest game so far of last year. And, you know, if, if, if it's good... If it's as good as people say, then my, like, my faith will be restored yeah. in these developers because it, it's it's not the genre. It's <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the genre. I'm actually looking forward to um, the Evil Within, which is being co-written and co-produced by one of the lead guys off Resident Evil. So I'm hoping that sticks and it doesn't change in development angle and doesn't become um, more action oriented. I'm hoping they'll stick to just making it as fucked up as possible. Because um, Resident Evil Five was, I st I like it. It's not mm. a horror. But if you're saying Resident Evil Five is a horror game, then it's probably one of the worst horror games of all time. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. scariest like, thing about Resident Evil Five as a game, was still functional and good. Was sorry. The scariest thing about Resi Five was how incompetent your partner character was. Well, I was about to say, oh, the scariest God. Thing about Resi Five was its AI. <laughs> yeah, that was terrifying. Yeah, Sheva was useless. Yep. Play it with play it with a mate. If you play Resident Evil Five with a mate, it is it is a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, it's, like, it, it's so funny. It's so it, yes, it is. That's a, exactly what I was going to say. It's which a horror game really shouldn't be, but um, <laughs> it's, if anything, I would relish a developer that took the that basically took the opportunity to make a scary co-op horror game. I think I, I you know, if you can do that, if you pull that off, fucking fair play to you. Why has nobody had an attempt at it then? Because it's fucking hard. <laughs> but somebody uh, you know fair play to anybody who gives that an attempt because at least they can say they tried and if they succeeded then they succeeded doing something very difficult and you, you know it's fair play it's a challenge for you <laughs> if you're listening but, no do you know what I, I say if anybody's thinking of doing it give it a go because at least you can say you tried and somebody has to so, somebody's got to try that all right so moving around a bit as well mix it up a bit we'll go to pete now um 
So your current state of horror, do you think it needs to improve, stay the same, or go back to previous incarnations? Yeah, um, I understand. Um, I mean, I think indie's going to be, you know, really going to be the way forward with this kind of, um, you know, with this genre of horror. Um, I, I think that, as you know, Ryan actually said, it's it. They're the people who are not. They're willing to take the risk to actually try that, and I'd, I'd actually just love to see that, you know, um, two-player um, horror if, if it would ever to come out. I think I think it would work actually really, really well. Um, so yeah. So we're we're all for a co-op horror game then, by the sounds of it. A good one. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it could work. It could be really, really bad. I mean it could be really, really you know. So why would that work in terms of? Um the platform it would be on would would it be like a Resident Evil esque one? Would it be like your camera one with ghosts? Would it be a it would be arcade machines like, like House of the Dead? Hey, eh? the arcade machines like House of the Dead. <laughs> They're not scary. basically Williams Player One and Player Two leaves the mess he makes whenever he plays the horror game. <laughs> I know. Player Two just cleans up after him. Oh, I know. <laughs> you know, like in uh, Dungeon Land, one person plays as the the. Oh, the, the big evil guy trying to stop you. Yeah, your friend could be the monster. Ah, uh, but that's not co-op though. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah. It could be like amnesia though, just with two players, and like you're separated, and the whole goal of the game is to try and get get back together to get out. That could like work. That. Yeah. Or, or like at any moment, like both players are volatile, so although they have to cooperate. At any moment, one of them's got like I don't know a giant cricket living in it, and at any moment, like if one character gets too scared or some shit, a giant cricket leaps out of his throat and tries to strangle his mate. I think very tenuous like that, there example. Would there would definitely need to be some sort of element. I mean, I mean, the most important thing about horror games is that people feel isolated. I think yeah. there would definitely be need to be some mechanic there, kind of you know, they like two players would have an advantage together, but they couldn't stay together for too long. Like, um, like the thing, like the film, the thing. People had to work together, but there was always an element of distrust there in case one of those people had the thing inside them. That is now, my favorite could... horror film of all time. I, oh, love, I love the original thing. I the... fucking love that. John film. Carpenter, 1982 one. Yes. Oh, so good. Um, the animatronics. <laughs> it's it's really really crappy special effects, but it's awesome. That mechanical dog thing, monster thing towards the end. That was crazy. Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> fucked up that was. It was just such a mess. It's so cool. I love the thing. Thing is just yeah. Ga a game like that, like you but have again, to. What, what thing, you the perfect platform would be then? Would it be a first person? Would it be a third person? First or third? First is there needs to be more first person horror. That's that's the most immersive way of experiencing it. You can only really do third if you're telling a story about a certain person, like you are in, say, Silent Hill. Or but only. if you just if you just want to be a character in a scary situation, stick it in first person, brown trousers all round. Yeah, no, I completely agree with that, yeah. So yeah. we're looking at a co-op first person horror game. What would be the setting? Um, oh, this is fun. Um, a castle and you have amnesia. <laughs> I, would, I would say something like that. That sounds so <laughs> original. We could even right. call it anything, amnesia. Anything oh except... Well, anything except... Nice. An <laughs> That's true. Anything except an asylum, a school, a hospital, or a castle. Or so, a lab. Work then. Okay. Lab. Anything except them. You I wake up one day and you find that it's your wedding day, but you have no idea who anybody is. <laughs> <laughs> the With the horror! The best man! So go on in the setting. Swamp? Left for Dead style? A locked up tube station. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Although that's been done. Wait, it's it's you did that. school at night. There was a horror movie that was a tube, wasn't it? It was Pants. It was called Creep, wasn't it? That's the one, yeah. Yeah, it was Pants. I personally Zombie you. Zombie yeah. you. This train says it's... to be pretty creepy. Yep. Or, um... You know when you go past office blocks when you're on a train and they're sort of lit but not and they're empty and everything's sterile? Like an office. A horror set yeah. light in an abandoned office that's complex. What, well, that's, that's what, what the game night, is. Um, one late really? night set in an office. I that's mean, what, oh there, god, I have to office. play that. Guys, one late talking night. Oh. Sorry? That's, that's what one late night is. It's in an office. I cannot wait to play that. <laughs> 
It's not an abandoned office, though. You, you literally <laughs> stay in there over time, finishing your report, and then shit goes down. The trailer did look terrifying. I was watching it earlier with the sound all the way down. It's, it's one of those things because it, you can tell it's been made on a small budget because some of the sound effects aren't brilliant, but it's the same thing about the thing. So, like... Some of the things are crappy, but they're still unnerving. And I think this is why, like, charms. I think this is why low budget is better, though, because the thing about the thing <laughs> is that, um, <laughs> like, the the special effects are kind of crap, but that kind of works in its favor because it's got this kind of otherworldly quality to it. Like yeah. when you put CGI in a horror film, it, it's a little bit too clean and a little bit too pristine, and you're like, well, that's yeah. not scary. But you look at like stop stop motion animation. That's a wonky very detached kind of animation that doesn't look like it belongs in this world. And I think that works in its favor. And that also kind of works for the indie game favor as well. The modern or like big budget developers, uh, they're too in the habit of sticking bloom lighting and anti-aliasing and high quality, high definition textures on things to really think we could save a lot of money here and make a pretty fucking awesome horror game if we scaled back our budget like the indies did. Yeah. Well, just look at Slender, the original Slender... That was just that. That's made on like a really simple program, and it's yeah. terrifying. It's just absolutely. You know, oh man, Slender is. I play any like map that gets like a new map that gets brought out for Slender. I'm on it instantly because I just love that game so much. Did yeah, Vinny, did you get Slender like the edition for Steam? The Slender: The Arrival. Yeah. That hasn't come out for Mac, so sadly I have not played it. You could play Penumbra. Penumbra is really good. Oh yeah, that was uh, a one before. Uh, Penumbra's good, Amnesia, it's, wasn't it? Gilbert, oh, just... Go- Gilbert Gottfried's in it. Why am I not playing this game right now? No, no, no. He's not in it, but like oh. this, this voice starts happening in the player's head, and it sounds like the parrot from Aladdin. Oh my goodness! Would you look at that huge monster that just came through the door? <laughs> <laughs> but I, I like. I liked Overture because it's like you're in an abandoned like cave system in mm. what is it like the North Pole or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you're it's completely good. stuck there and there's mon- you can fight the monsters but only a little, not too much. You have to like grab an object and then move the mouse to actually just swing it around, can't, don't That's you? It. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks for that, guys. Um, they're good to answer so far. I'm uh, just going to mix it up a bit more. Um, Jay, what would you uh, say the current state of horror is for you? Are you, you happy with it? Does it need improving? Does it need to go back? Maybe look at its roots? What, mm. What's your thoughts? I don't think we need to return. I think we need to innovate more. I think he's very much... Um, is that what Andy's doing right now, currently, though? Yeah, I mean, the indie, the indie scene is obviously booming, so, I mean, that's... What I've always said about indies, indie games in particular, is that a lot of them tend to be very, very good because they're made by people who love games, not people who just do it for a job or are used to doing a series or something such as that. You know, they're new, they have to be new, they have to be interesting, or, you know, they, they crash and burn. They yeah. live, indie games live on the edge that, like, that big companies don't. But I think a lot of the big popular series, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, um, Dead Space, again, another one, we, we kind of, a lot of people will kind of hark back to the first ones and refer to that as like the golden age of kind of horror games and that. I think it's wrong to do that. It's just that they've lost their ability to innovate <laughs> in a large way, which is why we tend to think that the ones previously are good or better or the best. They they just need to. It's it's like film sequels, you know. Like you know how many how many Nightmare on Elm Streets were there, and Friday the Thirteenth that nobody cares about because they completely forgot to innovate. The games just need, especially big games. They just need to innovate more. They don't need to go backwards. They just need to think more about what made it popular and stop just revamping. Could you the with a lot of mainstream is it's it's a risky subject. Because of unlike your first person shooters and your action games and things like that, it is what it is. With a horror game, if they fuck it up, like they didn't so much with um, Dead Space One, but imagine if Dead Space Three released in spe- you know in um, in replace of Dead Space One. Dead Space Three, I mean, first Dead Space. 
So we never had a Dead Space 1. We would literally all we had was Dead Space 3. That wouldn't have sold as a franchise. It would have gone straight down, wouldn't it? Because mm. everyone would be like, well, this is just, this is just ridiculous. The third one lacks innovation in comparison to the first one. I say innovation is what makes something fail, and that's what I think the genre is lacking. That's what I'm saying. Maybe mainstream aren't taking enough risks. Maybe they're not taking enough an example from the indie scene. Maybe. Mainstream uh, can't afford to sometimes. That's the thing as well. I think there's a lot of games, especially with kind of horror, I think you can look to games that aren't necessarily horror but have elements, like, uh, like Ryan was saying before, an important thing is suspense as opposed to shock. I mean, um, off the top of my head, I can think of a game that was really unsettling, removed you from a fairly similar environment, had a lot of suspense in it, Majora's Mask. Hmm. Hmm. That's not a horror game, but it had suspense, it had kind of, you know, I mean, yeah. kind of his transformations, they were sort of horrifying, they weren't what you expected of Zelda. It doesn't need to be a horror game to be scary. It just needs to innovate in a way that games like Majora's Mask or I'm going to put it out there, The Last of Us. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, you know? The Last of Us, you could class... So, sorry, Matt, I completely cut you off, so carry on. No, of course, no, carry on. Uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, The Last of Us, um, you know, you could actually put the tagline on it as a horror because when you came up against the clickers, if you were found, you were buggered. You know, that's... That's one of the things, like, you know, I was saying earlier, that whole sense of vulnerability. You know, any other infected, you're like, okay, I could take them on, but I'd rather not. But with the clickers or any other, even like, ugh, what were the, the bloaters, you yeah. know, you, you would, you'd stay, stay well clear of them. And I thought the moment they got close to me just it was an ass clenchingly tense, mo tense moment. <laughs> yeah, it's Couldn't fit a Rizzler between your cheeks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think, exactly. I think with The Last of Us, there's a very sort of, the clickers, they're, they're very sort of Doctor Who in a way. Like, have you noticed that all the good villains in a, like, Doctor Who are kind of like, when they get you, you're done for. There's no if, there's no but. When they get you, that's it. That's what yeah. I think The Last of Us really kind of brought back, that, you know, you had guns, you had weapons, you were resourceful, but it didn't matter shit if they got a hold of you. Yeah, yeah, you, you were buggered. But again, you know, that's something that the Resident Evil's lost. I mean, you know, it's like like we said before, it's an action game now. There's no horror involved. You're not scared of them. You just want to see if they're going to stand up to this newest weapon and this newest tactic of blowing everything up that you can see in your sights. Yeah, it is. It's not scary. It's, it, it, it's still have a suspense to it, though. Like, But then I suppose you could argue there's suspense in most games. I mean... A game that isn't a horror game, but creeps me at times, was Condemned. Yes. Yeah. Fit yes. with the mannequins. That's Jeez. fucked up. Oh, what, in the shopping centre? Yeah. That bit's so fucking yeah, creepy. You said about Doctor Who, Jay. They're basically the statues from um, the angels from Doctor Who. So if but, you but they're mannequins. You look away, you turn back, it's there. You look away, you turn back, it's there. That was freaking creepy, you know? So. It's that game yeah. called um, is it SP... SCP containment, containment breach. breach. Yeah. Uh, if you blink, the monster, uh, like the, when you don't look at it, the monster will get closer to you. So yeah, like the moment you blink, yeah. uh, you're fucked. That game like, is terrifying. Pretty, yeah, that's a free. I, I haven't been able to play it. Um, being a Mac owner, woe is me. But I watched the Let's Plays, and just even then, watching Let's Plays, it scared the absolute shit out of me because that thing, you know. <laughs> if you close your eyes, you're buggered, and just the fact that you have a blink mechanic, like that's a real yeah. difference that you don't get in other games. But yeah, yeah exactly that. The thing that you know, the thing that was scary about that is like the whole blink thing. It was an innovation. It wasn't mm. a revamp or a continuation of something. It was something new. You could take the most dead concept, and if you spin it right and you put stuff in it that's interesting, people will start flocking to it again. They'll go, you know, they've, they've really thought about it they've gone back we like this series anymore that's what's missing mm. Mm. fresh you yeah. know fresh air in again in the horror games it was like like that whole thing of tension again like fallout new vegas you know isn't a horror game but when i played it on hardcore mode and the fact that you have to be you have to remember to drink water and things like that that adds like, a new element of tension and even like a sky there's a skyrim mod i can't remember the exact name of it it's like exposure whatever but you have to watch um, your character because you'll get exposed to the cold and you can eventually succumb to the freezing cold environment. 
yeah. and that just adds a new element of tension which <laughs> if it wasn't a mod I'd say that's an amazing thing done by the developers yeah mm. Well, that's, that's, that's good answers there. All right, moving down then to William, where would you think current state of horror is? Well, indies are fine, and they should be allowed to go on the way they are because I they've made I've barely ever seen any bad horror games from indie developers because they've got the tension thing down to a T. Mm. But the triple A's need to like really go back to what they were doing and not just try and grab other people's audiences and because funnily enough Resident Evil fans are still waiting for Resident Evil games and the one thing that's annoyed me about Resident Evil is in all that time they still haven't followed the one the zombie rule where shot to the head would kill a zombie it mm. still takes like five or six shots to the head to kill a zombie in that game and it's just getting frustrating at this point like we're going to go in the Resident Evil 7 and they're still going to do it where it's going to take like six to seven shots, or something to kill a zombie. So they really need zombies to... anymore. Yeah, there was that really very infected. Parasite. They they got that weird. Yeah, yeah, the parasite thing. The, the clackers, I think they called it, or whatever. Yeah, they, they've got different names for it. In Resident Evil Five, it was like Uroboros, and then Resident Evil Four it was um, Las Blagos or something. Yeah, Las Blagos, and I thought was Four was like... Las Blagos. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Four was Los Plagos, then five was the Uraburos. Um Same thing, just different name, really. Yeah. Yeah. There's a little faction of zombies, kind of like camped out in Resident Evil games, kind of you know, like we are proud zombies. We will not be returned as the infected or the angry. We will yeah. be nice. Where did you think it went wrong for Resident Evil then? From four, which was like it was like well, some class at the best Resident Evil, where yeah, some might yeah. disagree, but. Some class that is like this this ultimate upgrade from like where we were at one point, a bit like the top down view of GTA to the sandbox GTA we have now. But you Thanks. literally went from four to five, and five just just what well, just sunk. Like it just did so really bad compared to four. What do you think that they did wrong? It's only one other game in the series. Didn't yeah, progress. Simple, simple. Sorry, mate, you go first. It, it didn't progress Resident Evil 4 enough. It ruined the inventory system. The level design was bad, and it turned into Gears of War towards the end. The AI was shit. It wasn't balanced for co-op. That's everything that was wrong. Also, yeah. when you got the armor upgrade, it took up space in your armor. Your, as Zero Punctuation put it, you're wearing your armor inside your armor. Your yeah. armor took up an inventory slot. And it, 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 a number of things. Resident Evil 5 was clunky and unbalanced and the six was better a lot of people give six slack i'm enjoying it much more than i am five but nowhere near as much rightfully so as four which is one of the best games ever made what i think's weird is uh you ever played nemesis yeah nemesis seemed to be a bit of an action game as well but it actually scared you because every time nemesis showed up you had to get out of there it's, it's like that monster in the first dead space the one that can't die yeah that and yeah. then have to eventually freeze it. That scared the living hell out of me because you know there was that one bit you uh, you're using your kinesis power um, to move all those kind of sliding walls around, and eventually the thing would get trapped inside this thing with you, and you're trying to use your kinesis to move all these really horribly slow moving walls. Scared the absolute crap out of me, and mm, you know I don't, I don't know why they don't do that more often. An enemy you cannot kill is terrifying. I mean, don't yeah. have time. That'll break a game, but you know, use it in small doses. Speaking of an enemy you can't kill, Amnesia did it just perfectly. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. True. Uh, you could run away from it though, and with them, well, the only thing that annoyed me a bit about an Amnesia, the monsters gave up pretty easily. Easily when you, they you kind of you, stumbled into the middle of the room and went, Ooh, and then kind of walked <laughs> off sadly. <laughs> <laughs> But other than that, Amnesia did scare the living hell out of me. Really, uh, some really good examples tonight. Um, broke down quite a lot to do within the industry as well, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, so we'll probably wrap up soon then. Um, so is there anything else anybody would like to bring to the table? I think favourite and least favourite very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, you are on then. Do you want to start, Joe? Uh, okay, uh, favourite horror game of all time. 
Um, I'm going to go with either... I wish I'd never asked this question now. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as you were relying on us to give all the answers. <laughs> I, I had a list in front of me, and I, I think as people have said things, I've kind of removed it, and now I'm like furiously alt zedding to go back and try and find what it was. Um, oh, that was it. I think the game that sticks with you. You don't forget it. Yes, we don't. Unless it's amnesia, <laughs> then you forget. <laughs> uh, I think Eternal Darkness probably, or there was a game on the PC called The Suffering, which I which was a fantastic horror game. Yeah, I totally forgot about that one actually. Yeah. Yeah. That was a fun one. I think the thing that was creepiest about that was the the most basic enemy, actually, just because I hate spiders, and they had this thing where they would kind of go clack, 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 clack. Oh, and they had, syri- they had syringes for eyes, didn't they? From the yeah, ceiling, that was dropped else, down yeah. suddenly. But these things had, like, blades for arms, and they would scamper up the ceiling, and that, yeah, was, that was the point where I was like, fuck, no, I'm not dealing with <laughs> scamping things with multiple legs. Nuh-uh. Um, yeah. Worst one of all time... Uh, da, 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 da. Probably Silent Hill Homecoming. I no. <laughs> I was done with it. Just done with it. Yeah, it was pretty bad. And the one which was basically Prison Break. Mm. Cool. Yeah, William. Yeah. Favorite and worst. Go for it. Ooh, my favorite and memory probably have to be Outlast. Yeah. In recent yeah. memory, at least, because I've still got that game installed because I know I have to play it again. Just because. Four days, PS4. Just because it's so good, I have to play it again, and I don't want to, but I do. <laughs> oh, I hate that. I'm worse. Uh, probably Darkness Within. It's a PC game. Mm. It's just awful. It tried to copy Amnesia directly. <laughs> a lot of the things that Amnesia: The Dark Descent does, this can't do, and it just it ends up being. A, a, Shitty copy of a game I love. <laughs> mm-hmm. And and Ryan, favorite and worst. Uh, favorite would either be Outlast or Project Zero Two, which I, I'm really enjoying it. The Wii edition, at the very least. Um, my least favorite is oh, brilliant! Finally, an excuse to talk about the obscure Dreamcast game Carrier. Um, has anyone heard of the obscure Dreamcast game Carrier? Basically, it's this um, Resident Evil ripoff that was on the Dreamcast, and it came out around about the uh, the tail end of the Dreamcast reign, so around about six months into the Dreamcast's lifespan. But um, it was set on this ship, and you were this guy with uh, this ridiculous body armor and a really feeble pistol, and it was clearly just trying to cash in on the success of Code Veronica at the time. And um, it had this kind of interesting mechanic where if you held down the B button, you had X-ray goggles and this fungus had taken over the ship and it allowed you to look through the fungus and see if there were enemies hiding on the uh, on either side of it. But it, it <laughs> try and look for videos of it on YouTube. It's simply called Carrier and it only came oh, out on yes. the Dreamcast. Oh, there are videos. <laughs> oh, excellent. I haven't actually looked myself and it's just a piss poor imitation of Code Veronica. And do you know what? I might actually go on eBay and try and get a copy because I would love to play through that again. It's but, on yeah, Amazon. Carrier, it's kind of like, what's your, you know, what power do you use to fight against, you know, undead hordes and stuff? Oh, I have mushroom vision. Mushroom goggles. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, there's nothing like it. It's and the voice acting is hilarious as well. Cool, cool. All right then, Vinny. Favorite. Um, favorite. By a long shot, easily slender. There is nothing that makes me poo my pants more than Slender. Um, but if I had to pick uh, another thing, the Ravenholm chapter from Half-Life 2 was actually quite scary. That was cool. That was. Just the moment the fast zombies appeared, I was like, "What? I'm so out of my depth. I need an adult. Help me, please. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have to say, in the Slender, uh, home, uh, the one for Steam, They've added an extra enemy. And oh, when really? you mix it with the Slender Man, it oh, is it's terrifying. It's a thing in a hoodie, yeah. isn't it? That little... Yeah, those little like kids, creepy kids. Yeah, and oh, they're, the they're, hell with that. They're terrifying. <laughs> they really are. Fair enough. And then your least, Vinny? My least... Um, like, right. It's a toss-up between two. In most recent memory, the one that angered me the most 
it's going to be no surprise when I say Dead Space 3 because yeah. it was just terrible. Everything about it is hate. I hate it. It has no soul. It just it was a big middle finger to any fans of the franchise and just video gamers in general. But a game that is just fundamentally broken, uh, I'd have to say Clive Barker's Jericho. I don't know if you ever played that. I heard about it. I know. That was like Mr. an Xbox Jericho launch game. Situation. Uh, yeah. it, I played it on the PS3. It came out, I've got it up now on Wikipedia. It came out in 2007. It was so poor. It was so awful. It was, um, what is it? Uh, Johnny Chiodini from GameSpot. He did um, one of those random encounter videos that I just where he plays through games. And he says, he was just going like, it's like, man, this game is really poor, but it's also very easy. I wonder what would happen if I played with my feet. And he got through a load of a chunk of the game <laughs> to the controller and play, play which the game was this? Sorry, Clive Parker's Jericho. Look it uh, up. Feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Uh, um, but yeah, it's just broken. It's and it's so glitchy. It's it tries to be scary, but it's not. Uh, it's incredibly easy. Um, it's just generally shit. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. All right, we'll finish up then. Pete, your favourite and worst. I think ultimately um, it is probably going to be most likely Slender, I'm thinking, mainly because it doesn't matter how many times I play it, it shit scares me, and especially with the new maps, you know, it was from the arrival with that stupid kid chasing you everywhere, and, you know, the second map bit, oh, and I was the third map, wasn't it, when you go, yeah, yeah, no, it just gets me every time to turn around and yeah, he's there. They, they, they did, even the tech demo originally when it was released on the forest, they did so much great things just from that simple yeah. concept. I remember when you showed me that for the first time, yeah. that, that game. Because I was like, it's, it fucked me up. And I'm just like, I'm going to go show all my friends. And I fucked them up as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you sell a horror game to people. <laughs> and your worst? As a horror game, it's going to be possibly the later Resident Evils because I think they just missed completely missed you know the, them being a horror uh, they're, they're more action games now rather than horror yeah I think they, they lost the concept be. of survival horror and it become more survival of the fittest I mean you know I was playing was, was, was it Revelations was it it was just us running around trying to get the biggest gun and shooting things rather than yeah trying to survive yeah yeah that, that was quite good do you guys do you guys uh, check out Revelations yet no, I, I really keep meaning to. I've been uh, I've been waiting for a price drop. You've got one, but I got it on the PC on Steam, and it was yeah, it was okay. It was yeah, I'm not saying it's you know, very bad. It just yeah. it, it, as a horror, yeah, it yeah. missed the point. Yeah, I'd agree with that one. I think when when you stop worrying about dying and more worried about getting the bigger weapon, that's well, that's not survival I mean, horror it, anymore, is it? We were tripping over ammo as if there was nothing. Mm. No. Oh, which gun shall we use today? We yeah. just didn't have a bit of, oh God, we've got nothing, and there's a boss in front of us. Yeah, that's true. That's very really true. I think for me, um, yeah, I'd go. I'd probably go with um, Vinny on his phone. It, it, it Slender was just, just the, not so much the arrival, the, the, the tech demo, the original, what was it, 10 minute forest, I guess you call it, because it's not that long really, is it, that tech demo? It, was the, uh, it felt like an age. It was ages. terrifying. Yeah, yeah. It felt I like, feel like I've never left that forest since. Yeah, it's still in my head right now. I think I'm fucking trapped there. Yeah. The worst is Dead Space because you fuck Dead Space, you fuckers. Simple. Really. <laughs> that will be my worst. Was that just the third one? Or the, latest? the third yeah. one, yeah. Definitely. It was horrible, horrible game. Yeah, it's more frustrating than horror, wasn't it? It was just. Oh, if you ever. You haven't played the original Dead Space, is that? No, I played the original, yeah. Yeah, just. Oh, you bastards. That's, yeah, I remember playing the original demo and just being pulled apart. It's like, no, nope, yeah. turn off the console, had enough. Yeah. <laughs> and then you had three. You, oh, my God. If they get a four, please just forget what you wanted to do with three and go back to the original. Jesus. Hope you all had fun. Yeah. Good, good. Well, I'm on my sofa now. I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it definitely brought some stuff up in my ears. Um, we'll be back in two weeks' time for another exciting podcast. Uh, we'll also be announcing the lucky winner of the Skyrim gifts. So be mm-hmm. sure to listen to that one. Um, not much more else to say, really. Um, anybody want to end on anything? 
I'm going to go play Octo Dad. Yes. I want and to I'm going to buy some wine gums. <laughs> I, would, I would like to say that they are making the Dead Space 4, but they're taking a break for now. <laughs> Alright then, as normal then, keep on gaming, keep it real, keep it TGR everyone. Peace out. Bye! Peace. Bye!